Hi, everyone. Welcome to the PLUS code session at the G4G Summit. Uh, I'm Jacqueline Rajwai, and I'm a program manager on the PLUS codes team. Physical addresses are taken for granted in most industrialized countries, but for billions of people, addresses effectively just don't exist. I currently live in Ireland, and I don't really have to worry about addressing given how well structured it is. However, I'm also Kenyan, born, raised, and educated, so I also know firsthand about the lack of addresses. Let us watch this short video about PLUS code, which is Google's solution to this problem. Have you ever considered the importance of an address? A physical address means people can find your home to deliver mail or packages, to connect utilities, and for emergency services to reach you if needed. Your address helps establish your identity, enabling you to open a bank account, register to vote, and secure access to social services. Today, across the world, there are billions of people without a well-functioning address, which limits their ability to access those vital services. Plus codes solve this problem. Plus codes are digital addresses. Using a simple, free, open source algorithm developed by Google Maps, the entire world is divided into grids. Each grid box is then divided again and again, such that with just a few characters, you can locate anywhere on the planet with a high degree of accuracy. These simple references to locations do not depend on roads, house numbers, or the quality of maps. So they work anywhere and everywhere, enabling everyone to access essential services. So this plus code, GVQF plus CC, locates an address in a dense area of Pune, India. Plus codes are free to use, work offline, and exist for any location. Even for places where there are no roads. It's a way to put yourself on the map. It's a way to say, I am here. Plus codes are already making a difference to people's lives worldwide. Now, let me share some real examples from everyday life uh, that show lack of addressing in action. This first example that we're seeing here is someone in India who has asked the delivery person to call them up once they reach a temple so that they can be able to collect their delivery. This experience, however, is not unique to India. In this example, which is a personal example, um, we're trying to give directions to our farm in Migori, Kenya, where we needed a booster installed, and I had to share a hand-drawn map with landmarks to be able to help the electricity provider come and fix the situation. More than 2 billion people today do not have an address. And as we saw in the video, digital addressing can help solve this problem. These addresses are simply simple, easy to use references to a location and do not depend on street names. And they also work on Google Maps today. The Plus Codes technology is open source. Plus Codes digital addresses, as I mentioned before, are simple to use. Um, and they're based on latitude and longitude, which is much shorter than traditional global coordinates. They're just 20 alphanumeric characters and are based are not based on any particular language, making them accessible to many. They also include, um, we also exclude easily confused symbols, like five uh, could be easily confused when we have S and eight could easily be confused with B. So we exclude these confusing symbols to reduce errors and we also exclude vowels to avoid generating any words. Plus codes represent an area and the size of the area can vary based on, uh, based on the varying level of granularity that you may need. Plus codes can also be used by devices when they're offline. So if you search for a plus code while offline on Google Maps, it will still drop a pin on the map at that exact location. Now let's take a closer look at how a plus code is formed. As you'd have seen in the video, Plus Codes technology is a simple, simple grid-based system that convert, converts latitude and longitudes into a simple short code. Visualize the world as a grid uh, based on 20-degree intervals. 
Now each grid is further divided into 20 by 20 grids where each column and row is labeled with one of the 20 plus code alphanumeric characters. Here uh, in the example being seen, the plus code is A7G8 plus M2. This is what you see in Google Maps today, as well as the locality. The resolution of the area can then be changed by adding or removing characters after the plus sign. So in the example above where there's two characters after the plus sign represents an area that's about 14 by 14 square meters. While if you have three characters after the plus sign, it represents an area of approximately 2.5 by 2.5 square meters. This speaks to the versatility of plus codes. Let's now see how you can find plus codes for a place in Google Maps using your phone. So open Google Maps on your phone. Uh, search for the plus code that you see on the screen here, VFRR plus 3V Rome. Let's see where that plus code takes you. If you search for that location, this plus code should lead you to the Colosseum in Italy, which is one of the eight wonders, seven wonders of the world. Similar to the Colosseum, you can find a plus code for any place you're looking for or you're trying to navigate to. Now in the Google Maps app on your phones, move the map to any other place that you want to find the plus code for. Hold and press to drop a pinpoint for that location. Tap where it says dropped pin and you it will open what we call the place sheet and you can be able to find the plus code. And if you tap on that plus code, uh, it will copy that digit and you're able to share it on any other platforms. Now let's look at some product updates um, and launches that have happened recently for plus codes. I will first talk about the new features that have made it easy for you to find and share the plus code for the location you are at. Then we'll also look at the Geo APIs that now support plus codes. And lastly, I will briefly share about tools that are being piloted for scaled addressing projects. So if you want to find the plus code for your location, open Google Maps on your phone. Look at the blue dot uh, that shows your current location. Make sure it's correct and then tap on that blue dot. This will open up and show the plus code of your location. As mentioned before, I'll also speak about uh, the integrations of plus codes in the Geo APIs. And this enables anyone in worldwide to be able to use a unique, precise digital address, no matter where they are in the world. The Places API service returns information about places such as establishments, geographic locations, or even prominent places of interest. The Places API now also provides plus codes in response to a place search, place details, and place autocomplete requests. The place autocomplete automatically fills in the name uh, or address of a place as a user types it in. It now also returns the plus code suggestion once a first letter of the plus code address is typed in. In addition, once a user has selected the plus code, then the geocoding API kicks in and converts the plus codes into geographic coordinates. This then can be directly used to, for example, dispatch a driver uh, to schedule delivery or, or, or more. With plus codes in place, uh, place autocomplete, place details, directions, and geocoding, you can now reach and deliver services to people no matter where they are in the world. Lastly, let's look at the tools and processes that can enable skilled, uh, skilled addressing. And as mentioned, these are, these are tool sets that we are piloting uh, in terms of enabling plus code addressing at a skilled uh, and to drive accuracy and efficiency. There's primarily four elements included here. One is a mobile field app, which, is, which helps to generate and verify plus code addresses on the ground. Secondly, we have the web console and the web application is able to help you manage the end-to-end -end life cycle of the project. The, the console also helps to integrate um, and manage admin-related support. On the backend side, we have backend support to manage the data and integrate it into other tools like Google Maps. And finally, we have detailed literature and documentation of addressing policies, workflows, as well as training resources. 
Now, let me talk about some of our projects worldwide um, and how PLAS codes have been used to one, unlock various opportunities such as social inclusivity, enabling people establish um, and formalize their identity. We have also seen PLAS codes um, very useful, uh, play a very useful role for different players such as the state, uh, for nonprofits, uh, or even for health entities. And we have also seen PLAS codes work really well in urban and rural environments. Firstly, we'll look at Kolkata. Um, and in Kolkata, Kolkata has over 1 million people living in crowded, underserved urban areas. The organization addressing the unaddressed stepped up to help solve the addressing problem for this population. It was very challenging, however, given the density of these areas. Uh, they're very narrow lanes. Uh, the dense roof cover makes uh, GPS very inaccurate, but also makes it very difficult to use satellite imagery. Using PLAS codes, they were able to deliver addresses at scale to hundreds of thousands of residents across Kolkata, allowing people to receive mails and delivery and also open up bank accounts for the first time and better secure social and economic opportunities. Here we'll talk a bit about the Navajo Nation, uh, which is one of the largest Native American territories in the United States. The territory is largely under, uh, unaddressed, which has affected residents' ability to access services. For example, residents had difficulty uh, registering to vote or receive mail. It was also difficult for teachers to locate where their students were if, for example, they missed their buses. The organization Rural Utah Project adopted PLAS codes as an effective solution specifically because the technology works independent of house numbers and road names, which as I mentioned before, the technology is built off of lat longs. After receiving a PLAS code address, the residents of the Navajo Nation were able to sign up for voting and get better access to emergency services. Indeed, during the recent COVID-19 outbreak, these addresses proved truly invaluable in being able to get goods and services to residents um, of the Navajo. We'll now talk a bit about uh, a project in Mogadishu in Somali, where every year thousands of people migrate uh, and live in informal settlements. Now, due to the lack of a structured system, only a fraction of the population is able to access existing health services, and hence the immunization coverage is really low. Healthcare workers from the International Rescue Committee led a mapping exercise and used an application where they integrated the PLAS codes technology. They registered and tracked follow-up follow visits for mothers and children to provide vaccination service and family planning guidance. The project enabled healthcare workers to identify and vaccinate um, immunization defaulted children. Um, post these thousands of children were vaccinated and hundreds of mothers were able to adopt a family planning method as a result. Lastly, uh, without a registered address, people face problems in accessing services that require registration or postal correspondence, and this has been true in the state of Sao Paulo. This government of uh, Sao Paulo is leveraging PLAS codes to enable more people and organizations enjoy the benefits of having an address. In addition, uh, to helping people access public services. They want to create opportunities as well for economic growth of these regions by facilitating logistics and stimulating trade. The Sao Paulo government has partnered, has partnered with Google with the intention to offer PLAS code addresses to hundreds of thousands of rural households in the state. With the experience um, across all these use cases, we strongly believe that people can greatly benefit from an address, not only to access services, but also to secure the identity and be accessible. Thanks for joining me um, at the geo for good Summit. Uh, please feel free to ask more questions at the PLAS Codes Ask Me Anything session tomorrow, uh, and we can talk more about PLAS Codes and answer any questions you may have. Thank you.